Hey, all it's Trader Bubba. I know we're coming off a crazy weekend, but uh, I'm not here to talk about what happened at the Trump rally. I made my previous video and talked very briefly about my thoughts on that. So if you're here looking for information on uh, the shooting, look elsewhere. Today's video is brought to you by my book. I'm announcing my 1,000 subscriber giveaway where I will be giving away a ton of awesome, fun Trader Bubba merch. Uh, some of it is going to be uh, specifically tailored for that giveaway. Plastic tumblers, but with Cousin, uh, Cousin Emmy on it. Dishwasher safe. I really love these things. I use these things a lot in the summer. I was very surprised by the quality. I know this channel started off talking a lot about gold and silver, so I did write this amazing book, California Gold and Silver, A Mad Romp Through a Mad State. This tells the story of my first early years in California, of the hard living I did, things I'm not proud of, things I've seen, and um, why I started focusing so heavily on finance, growing and protecting wealth. Um, I'm going to do a giveaway in this video for a free copy of this book plus some other fun merch so leave a comment down below just write just leave me the word book in the comment and uh i will do a drawing uh probably on friday so you got a few days uh so all you gotta do again leave the word book in the comment section and we'll do a drawing to give away some free stuff but yeah 1,000 subscribers i'm gonna give away a a ton of free stuff. It's going to be fun. I'm almost there. I appreciate you guys. Back in the good old days, you'd hop in the go in the town car and go to your local drain post. There, you wouldn't just buy the things you need, but catch up on your gossip. Talk to your local community members about what's going on in the world. Boy, we've got a lot to talk about. And today, we're going to be talking about, well, not so much the debate. I finally watched most of the debate. I put off watching it. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about the economy and some of the things we've heard. Namely, when I talk to friends of mine, uh, especially on the conservative side of things, what I'm hearing most is they're concerned about the border and the economy in general. They are under the impression that we're living in a harder time now uh, than we did during the Trump presidency. And this was brought up in the debate. <clears throat> and it's been talked about at the rallies and and whatever. So I want to take a look at that in today's segment of You Both Idiots. There's a lot of different ways to measure how the economy is doing. Uh, mostly we look at the GDP, which right now is up. We take a look at the stock market, which is on a pretty big run. Uh, and we look at the unemployment numbers, which are low. However, there's still this perception out there that prices are high, and they are. But is that because inflation is high, or is that because these companies just don't want to bring their prices back down? Inflation has actually dropped down to just over 3%. And we're finally starting to see a drop in the consumer price index, which measures the more or less the cost of everyday goods that we have to purchase from the grocery store. So those prices are very slowly finally coming back down. I got to be honest, I don't attribute that to Trump or Biden. But first, I want to talk about jobs. One of the ways we measure the economy is by how many jobs we created in the unemployment rate. Now, Biden came out and said he created X amount of jobs. I think he said, what was it, like six, 700,000 new jobs? And this isn't wrong, but it's not completely accurate either because a very large portion of those jobs were actually recovered jobs from the economic shutdown of the pandemic. Yes, four years later, we're still having to talk about this and we're still recovering from the economic shutdown. So this is from an article titled, Trump is misleading you with COVID era statistics, but so is Biden. 
And it reads, according to Donald Trump, he oversaw sky-high economic growth, soaring markets, and half-century low unemployment. Joe Biden says Trump was the first president to preside over a net loss in jobs since Herbert Hoover. We've also I've also seen this graphic going around uh, showing the jobs created uh, by each president, and Trump is the only one in the negative. Now, I don't know how accurate this is. I mean, I believe that it's accurate, but I believe we're losing something in the nuance because, again, in the final year of the Trump administration, obviously COVID hit, but we didn't really start shutting down our economy really until about the last half of 2020 going into the election. So he still had a most, I would say, 95% of his four years in office uh, to affect positive job numbers. But we do have to take into account still that economic shutdown right at the tail end of his presidency. Uh, Biden boasts that his own presidency is defined by booming job growth and plunging deficits. Trump says consumers have felt worse in decades because of inflation. Now, the difference between Biden and Trump is kind of going back to the 1980s liberal versus conservative uh, economic you know, programs in that Biden is very much about investing in infrastructure and spending more money. And Trump is very much about cutting taxes uh, and making our economy strong through replacing actually taxes with tariffs uh, for imported items. Now, again, 99% of our stuff is not made in the USA. So even a lot of the food we eat is brought in from other countries. In fact, I just saw... <laughs> I just saw a a TikTok video. I wish I saved it to share it with you. But the corn at Walmart, their super value, whatever brand, their store brand, has a warning label on it because it contains chemicals known to the state of California that cause cancer because that corn didn't come from the U.S., even though we're a huge uh, provider of corn. Uh, It came from like Thailand or something. So again, a lot of the foods we eat are not even grown here in the states so tariffs uh, are a very large talking point and very controversial i know you might not be hearing about it as much it's not a big sound bite or talking point if you're just kind of catching up on your local evening news but it is something that's being talked about and then again it is very controversial but the, we're sort of back to the old school Big government spend a lot of money versus conservative, smaller government spend less money with that trickle down economic theory. Trump's big goal is to slash taxes again, because he did this during his presidency for the uber wealthy and for large corporations and getting those taxes down mostly for them and not for the middle class. Um, I've been seeing um, a post go around. I haven't been able to overly verify it, but supposedly under Trump's tax plan, uh, an average four person family making a hundred thousand a year would see an increase of about $2,500 on their income tax with his tax plan. While the Uber rich making over a million dollars a year would see a decrease of over $300,000, uh, on their income taxes. Um, Again, I haven't been able to overly verify that, so take that with a grain of salt. But we've seen this before with his wanting to cut taxes on the uber rich, which just places, in my opinion, a larger burden on the middle class who see none of that tax cut. But the theory is that if you give the rich a break, they invest more and spend more, which somehow trickles down to us. However, <sighs> In 2020, a paper by David Hope of the London School of Economics and Julian Lindbergh of King's College London examined 18 developed countries from Australia to the United States over a 50-year period from 1965 to 2015. The study compared countries that passed tax cuts in a specific year, such as the U.S. in 1982 when Ronald Reagan slashed taxes on the wealthy with those that didn't and then examined their economic outcomes. It turns out that per capita, 
gross domestic product or the GDP and the unemployment rates were nearly identical after five years, after five years of cutting those large taxes in countries that slashed taxes on the rich and in those that didn't. But there was one significant difference. The incomes of the rich grew much faster in countries where the tax rates were lowered. Instead of trickling down to the middle class, the tax cuts for the rich may not accomplish much more than to help the rich keep more of their riches. This is not even from an American paper. This is from universities of economics out of the UK. So during Reaganomics in the 80s, that was his big thing, right? Trickle down economics. And you can look this up. This is easily verifiable. The separation of socioeconomic classes grew further apart than ever in the 80s from this trickle down theory. He deregulated the markets and the markets shot up in a bubble that burst before he even left office. In 1987, the market crashed. So the rich got rich, but then everybody lost everything and it hurt the working class the most. On the flip side, Biden smashed records by adding 6.6 million jobs in his first year in office. But that represented healing. The U.S. economy didn't recover all of the jobs lost during the economic shutdown. So again, there's nuance to everything these guys are saying. You know, Biden's coming out and saying he's, I've created 6.6 million jobs in his first year. But how much of that were jobs recovered from the economic shutdown? Uh, this might seem like a convenient argument for ba- uh, Biden allies, given that voters overwhelmingly prefer Trump's economy to Biden's. And I mostly hear people in the administration focus instead on the ways that they've tried to make the economy better, such as investing in infrastructure. So <clears throat> the only thing, the only other thing that compares to the economic shutdown of 2020 is really the Great Depression. And the biggest way that Roosevelt got us out of that depression was through government spending, investing in infrastructure, and putting people to work through these government programs and getting the economy flowing again. Uh, He spent a lot of taxpayer dollars. Uh, Things like the Hoover Dam came out of this, the Forestry Service, all sorts of government-funded projects that put people back to work so people could then spend that money and get the economy flowing again. Stagnating incomes, opportunity gaps, and fragile families are all the reasons to worry about the middle class. Public policy has done little to ameliorate these concerns. After accounting for taxes and transfers, growth in average middle class household incomes has lagged significantly behind the lowest and especially the highest income Income of the top 20% rose by 97% from 79 to 2014, over twice as much as middle class income. Even the lowest has seen faster income growth, 69% or two thirds higher than income growth. So basically what this is saying is, again, this is during Trump's administration, is that the upper echelon of income earners saw a huge increase in their earnings while the lower income stagnated. I guess my biggest issue is whether it's a debate, whether it's a Trump rally, or whether it's a press conference conference from Biden, is they always lack nuance. Back in the good old days of politics, when somebody was running for president, uh, they would have people on their team actually write up policy and they would say, this is my plan to do this. And they would have a written policy saying how they're going to do that. And I think they don't do that anymore, which is frustrating. So political.org around uh, 2020, 2021, uh, put out this really cool list of both accomplishments and things not so well uh, from the Trump administration. Uh, So we're going to say some nice things about Trump. I'm warning you now. And then we're going to talk about some things that maybe weren't so good. Uh, During Trump's time in office, the economy lost 2.9 million jobs and the unemployment rate increased by 1.6% all the way up to 6.3%. So I don't know if this is including the economic shutdown. I don't believe so, which is a little surprising. But uh, 
I couldn't find anything to like show graphics saying, no, this doesn't include that. So we're going to take that with a minute grain of salt. But again, he had three and three quarters years to get those jobs numbers up. And we ended up losing 2.9 million jobs. However, paychecks grew faster than inflation under Donald Trump. Average weekly earnings for all workers were up 8.7% after inflation. After tax corporate profits went up and the stock market set new records, the S&P index rose 67.8%. Um, and again, um, if you go back to some of my earliest, earliest videos, talking about investing in my favorite stock pick, which is an index fund that covers the S&P 500, that was on about a 10 or 11 year run and just rose. And even when the market took a dump about two years ago, the drop in the S&P 500 was surprisingly, I don't want to say insignificant, but surprisingly small and manageable. And it was just a good time to even buy more into it. <clears throat> the initial trade deficit Trump promised to reduce actually went up. The U.S. trade deficit in goods and services in 2020 was the highest since 2008 and increased 40.5% from 2016. The number of people lacking health insurance rose by 3 million. I'm curious on your thoughts on basically what we now call the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, because this did provide millions of people who didn't have health insurance with health insurance. But for, I don't understand on the conservative side, the attacking of Obamacare because they haven't come up with anything else to replace it with. Um, so I don't know. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think of, of, of that. The federal debt held by the public went up from $14.4 to $21.6 trillion. So this is in the form of U.S. Uh, savings bonds uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and again, this is um, related to our country's deficit where we spend more than we earn back in taxes. Uh Biden, I think, was the first one to actually be uh, paid down the deficit. It wasn't this year. I think it was last year or the year before. It was very early on. I, I know that was a big talking point. Um, but again, for the most part, every president, both liberal and conservative, they love to say we're going to pay down our country's debt and we're going to uh, not be in a deficit with our budget. And it never happens. Home prices rose 27.5% and the home ownership rate increased 2.1%. Um, yeah, uh, home prices did were starting to skyrocket. Um, and then too, with 2020 and the when they lowered the interest rates to zero or the mortgage rates down to like 2.5%, there was a massive boom to buy a home at that time. But again, this is covering all four years uh, of the Trump presidency. Uh, we have a real housing crisis in this country and it's not Biden's fault. It's not even Trump's fault. To be honest, the housing crisis is caused a lot by private equity firms buying up so many of the homes and then uh, turning them into rental properties. It's sort of like an artificial bubble. It looks like everyone's out there buying a home, but if you look at private equity firms buying homes versus private individuals, you're going to see a, a vast differential there. And it's it's these companies buying property that, in my opinion, are causing this sort of fictitious uh, bubble in the market uh, because prices on anything are based on uh, supply and demand. So it looks like there's this huge demand for property, but it, that demand isn't from me or you. It's from BlackRock. Um, uh, that's a whole separate video. Um, I, and again, but there again, I don't hear Trump talking about it. I don't hear Biden talking about it. And it's one of the biggest problems facing, especially the younger generation. Um, here's a fun one. Illegal immigration increased, uh, apprehensions at the Southwest border rose 14.7% last year, uh, compared to 2016, uh, last year being, I believe, 2017 for this one. Uh, but yeah, there was a huge increase in illegal immigration under Trump. How ironic is that? 
Uh, and then do you remember during the 2016 campaign when he was saying he was going to bring back all these coal jobs? He, he was really going after that coal miner vote. Uh, coal production declined 26.5% and coal mining jobs dropped by 16.7% under Trump. Handgun production rose 12.5%. Uh, the murder rate was at an all-time have all-time level since 97. Uh, I thought we were the law and order party. Uh, Trump filled uh, one-third of the Supreme Court, uh, which, would, again, that's a whole separate video. So these are just some facts. I'm tired. I'm tired of Biden not being able to present his own wins correctly and just using sound bites and almost incorrect data that's going to get come back and and basically hurt him because he's partially wrong. I'm tired and exhausted of Trump just making up facts at this point and using fear about immigration in the border uh, as a way to obtain your vote when most of you all probably don't even live in a border state. Uh, I was doing some research. I want to do a video on the border. And one of the things I was surprised to learn is that border cities are some of the safest in America with a huge decline in gun violence. I, I had to double check that. I couldn't believe uh, that. But then again, when all the immigrants that are arriving are getting shoved into buses and sent across country, I guess, you know, they're never even in that border city. Anytime I do research and I'm showing you screenshots from articles, I try to let you know where that article is coming from. Um, uh, I don't generally use articles from 24-hour news networks um, unless I'm talking about economics or investing. MSNBC has a lot of uh, business and investing articles, or at least they used to. Um, but when it comes to talking about policy or taxes or anything that's remotely political, I don't, I try to stay away from articles from 24 hour news networks. Um, I try to stay away from those sort of online news companies that are strictly conservative or strictly liberal. Um, the Huffington Post really let me down during the 2016 election. I thought they were putting out some interesting stuff, but they got fact checked uh, just as bad as Fox News on a few things. And uh, I stopped using Huffington Post. Uh, the New York Times uh, has had some issues lately with that. So just, again, be mindful of where you're getting your information from. If, it, if you're only getting your information from social media posts, I'm telling you, you're screwed. You're getting misled. Facebook is incredibly bad right now. Um, there's so many fake accounts from these, like, uh, they're called like farms, I think, Um if you ever see a post where it says, like, why doesn't this photo trend? That's uh, uh, from a profile that I can almost guarantee is from a foreign entity. And they're just trying to get you to like and comment on it to drive traffic. It's, it's ridiculous. Guys, I'm Trader Bubba. We're going to keep talking about all sorts of stuff on this channel. We're going to keep digging into things. We're going to keep learning and growing together. And don't forget, 1,000 subscriber giveaway, all sorts of fun stuff. I'm Trader Bubba. Y'all stay safe out there. Hey, y'all. Thanks for stopping by here at Trader Bubba's where we talk about growing and protecting our... Hmm. I guess I should answer the call to freedom. While I'm on the phone, do me a favor. Check out my other videos. You won't regret it. Hello.